Welcome back to Science Teens. Today we are joined by Professor Raghunath Mashalkar, one of India's most accomplished chemical engineers. He is the recipient of the Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Vibhushan awards, as well as the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award. For today's interview, Science Teens will be collaborating with the Samarthanam Trust for the Disabled, a national award-winning NGO that works for the empowerment of the disabled and the underserved. One of their primary initiatives is providing quality education for all with the motto leaving no child behind. Without further ado, let's get started. My first question for you sir is at what age did you realize that you wanted to pursue science and after this after you realized this what was your path like? You get into science because uh, you want to understand uh the world around you and for that you have to be curious and i was always curious i always wanted to know uh why certain things happen the way uh, they happen whether you look at the sky whether you look at the sea you look around so i always had uh, this particular uh, uh, innate curiosity and then what happened was that uh, i got a lucky break a lot depends upon the kind of teachers that you have and i had a wonderful teacher and who made all the difference that i was born in a very poor family i uh, was born in a village called mashe in goa and my mother was an illiterate lady and she brought me to mumbai and she did practically many jobs to bring me up to meals a day was a, a challenge i studied under street lights and uh, I went to a municipal school, studied in Marathi. So all the good schools, the admissions were closed. And thank God I got admission there because that poor school had rich teachers, rich in terms of their thinking, their approach. And one of them was Principal Bhavi, uh, who used to teach uh, science to us, uh, sort of uh, uh, make us see things and learn from them. One day he did one experiment which was very interesting. he wanted to show us how to find the uh, uh, you know if you take uh, a convex lens and you want to find what is its focal length so it's a simple experiment you go out into the sun hold the convex lens and then he moved it around and there was a bright spot and then he said this distance is the focal length and then he held it for some time and the paper burned and when the paper burned for some reason he turned to me and he says if you focus like this you can achieve anything so that did two things to me there was a warm moment for me you know in our lives we always have a warm moment it changes your life that was a warm moment for me because i said my god the power of science is so fantastic i'm going to become a scientist and the second was that i said like this if you focus you can achieve anything so in my, all my life I focus. That's why I tell uh, all the young students that you can do anything, but not everything. So focus. You know that came from there. So that was uh, where my journey started, and I decided to uh, take up science. Then I actually uh, went to Jaihind College, uh, uh, where I did my into science, and then I uh, picked up uh, chemical engineering as a discipline. Uh, and then of course i had my stint as a post doctoral research fellow in uk as a professor the rest is history then i became the director general of csi chain of forty laboratories etc etc but my journey started with that one great experiment which was the warm moment in my life where i said science is so fantastic i must take up science it's very interesting actually it just shows you how the smallest of things can have such a big impact on people's lives um why chemical engineering specifically could you tell us a little bit about that specialization oh well uh, i uh, would consider chemical engineering as one of the most uh, versatile uh, engineering as a matter of fact uh, each one of us has some chemical engineering going on in our own body when you breathe we take air it uh, the oxygen goes to the lungs 
carbon dioxide comes out, etc. These are all chemical reactions. It's all uh, pervading, so as to say, uh, from smallest to the uh, biggest, uh, I would say. The chemical plants, of course, are known because you wouldn't get your fuel, uh, let's say kerosene, diesel, petrol, etc., if the crude oil was not refined into these factions and we will not be able to run our cars. So everything that you touch and see is uh, chemical engineering, I would say. It is really all pervaded. This is the only field, uh, you know, mechanical engineering is all about mechanical artifacts. Uh, electronics is uh, something different, but chemical uh, just uh, sort of is all pervades. Uh, that's why it is fascinating. Could you tell us about um, some exciting findings that have made a big difference in society or some moments that you found very memorable in your career? Uh, 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 remember uh, the uh, very motto of National Chemical Laboratory. You said that the motto of this laboratory is to advance science and to use it for the good of the people. There are two separate things. Okay? That means science must be used for society. And I was given the mandate of uh, creating a school on polymer science and engineering to create new polymers. Okay? Mm -hmm. One of them, uh, one of the polymers was like uh, sort of a magic. Uh, suppose, just imagine, I have got a, a bitter full of uh, water, okay, a cup full of water. And I just fill to just one gram of a polymer. And that one gram is able to absorb all the 100 gram or 200 gram of water. Can you just imagine that? And I turn it over, it will not fall. Like Agassi Rushi, you know, it uh, takes up all the water. So we created that uh, polymer, it was called Jalashan. Now, there's no use of showing the magic of science, like creating a polymer which was so super absorbing. So what is the use? Uh, we said that we must use it for uh, India. As you know, uh, rains come, the farmers have done the all the seeding, all the sowing, and uh, then the rains disappear, and they don't come for two weeks. Then what happens? All the seeds die because they don't have water. So we got this idea that we take a seed, coat it with this polymer, there is a thing, and then what happens? When the rains come, that Jalashakti absorbs all the water, and when the rains don't come, it keeps on feeding uh, the seeds with water. So seeds do not. And uh, the um, uh, Indian Council of Agriculture Research did some wonderful experiments to show how it works. And we started actually producing it. We started reaching farmers. Now, this is what I mean, that science must solve, technology must transform, innovation must impact. Now, the second question that you asked is that, what is the most uh, uh, precious moment in my life? You know, I would say not one, but two moments, and they are completely different. One is, uh, you often wonder when you do great science, uh, the highest that you can aim for is Nobel Prize. The level next to that is what is called as Fellowship of Royal Society, FRS. This was established around 360 years ago by great scientists in uh, India. And uh, all the great scientists of the world are fellows of that like Einstein, like Newton. And uh, uh, in 360 years, there are only three engineering scientists. You know, you talk about engineering, but what I have done is engineering science. That means the interface between engineering and science. Uh, we have become the fellows of Royal Society. Now, one of the great things that happens is that when you are admitted to Royal Society, the president shake hands with you and then admits you. And I remember the Nobel laureate, Professor Harun Kluk was the president. And he shook hands with me and uh, admitted me. And then you sign in the book. And can you imagine, you sign in the same book where Newton has signed. And then all of us are allowed to uh, see one signature, by the way. So many people see Einstein, the that, etc. Most people see Newton's, and that is on page nine. And because everybody sees it, it is laminated. So when I was studying Newton's laws in college, if somebody had told me that one day you will sign in the same book and Newton has signed, I would not have believed it. 
but that happened to me that's a very very special uh, moment now there are other moments uh, that come when you feel happy that you are a scientist and let me tell you that because you asked me for one moment but i will tell you two more in orissa there was a cyclone and everything was devastated uh, there was no drinking water nothing and within uh, in pune uh, we had again developed what is called uh, as a filter filtration membrane uh, which actually uh, would take uh, water dirty water and filter out the virus filter out bacteria okay and it could be used to, uh, without using electricity there was no water there all dirty muddy water with uh, uh, you know corpses of uh, pulux etc floating around and people were drinking from and then one old man was given this crystal clear water and as he was drinking he was crying as he was drinking he was crying you know that was the power of science for the good of the society that we had created when i heard that i said life is worth it it's very beautiful I mean, it's such an inspiring story to actually hear about. Um, now, I'd I'd want to go back on a point that you had mentioned, the distinction between um, engineering and engineering sciences. Um, I find this interesting because a lot of people think that if you go into science, it means you're going to end up doing research. But I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, the different branches you could um, take up within science. It's like research, engineering, maybe even entrepreneurship. Oh yes, so science is very versatile. If you take a course on science, you have certain attributes that you sort of learn. You know, uh, it's not science per se, or some chemical formula that you remember. That's not science per se. Uh, but the process of science, for example, uh, you are curious, you are patient, uh, you know, you have an open mind, etc. These uh, sorts of things actually help you. Uh, as you sort of uh, move forward you can uh, sort of uh, look at uh, uh, scientists uh, nobel laureates for example uh, who have uh, uh, created well simply because not because they got a million dollar prize but they use the science that they have done uh, to create enterprises to create startups for example so that's why i always say there is saraswati there is lakshmi and there is a route from saraswati to lakshmi we have not done that uh, very often in india but uh, uh, abroad it has done it is not that uh, it has not been done in india for example look at kk gharda of gharda chemicals you know right in bombay uh, mumbai and uh, based on the chemistry that he developed he created his entire enterprise which is uh, worth a billion dollar today basically but it was all based on uh, the chemistry that he used so not only you must advance that use it basically uh, you know that means there is a applicable knowledge applicable science that can create uh, wealth and i remember i got the linovo science prize uh, of uh, 1 lakh dollars uh, two years ago which is called kind of a mini nobel prize for uh, developing world scientists but it was 1 lakh dollars 75 lakh of rupees so if you do great science you can also <laughs> <laughs> get uh, wealthy you know so i i would say that uh, saraswati and lakshmi can go together uh, provided you have the right mindset uh, to sort of move okay now this is very interesting what you just mentioned that you know you can get wealthy when you're in science because you know it's a question that i've had it's a question that a lot of my friends have had science is a very well respected and uh, rewarding field but how easy is it to make a lot of money in science realistically how how does it look like no look uh, you must realize that you do it because science is fun there is what is called as physical income and there is what is called as psychic income psychic income is this mental satisfaction of having discovered something new you understand having done something for the society and the kind of uh, satisfaction that you get by doing that is a bigger income than actual wealth in fact if you are just after wealth don't go to science i would put it this way okay you can uh, get into commerce you can get into several other activities uh, etc 
But science primarily has to be something uh, that you enjoy doing, uh, discovering, uh, doing something for the society, uh, etc., etc. I think that is uh, uh, the most important one. Now, those of you who have done science, which is applicable science, you know, then if you start uh, learning certain other skills, like patenting, because when I was at National Chemical Hockey, I found that you can create wealth out of knowledge, but only knowledge that is protected, knowledge that belongs to you. It is almost like supposing you want to sell a house, okay? Then you have to show that that property belongs to you. Similarly, there is what is called as an intellectual property. You have to show that that intellectual property belongs to you. How do you do that? By filing patents in your name. And therefore, many times there have been discoveries in India where uh, uh, money has been made, but money has been made abroad, not here. Also for creating wealth out of science, uh, it is not just discovering something, but there are several other things, you know, uh, that uh, you have to have. And then you, you can create. Um, now, finally, if I wanted to become a scientist today, um, what do I do? What do I need to know? And what advice would you give me? Well, I think, uh, you know, in life, I always say there are three things that matter. Ability, attitude, and aptitude. Ability, attitude, and aptitude. Now, you must have an aptitude for science. How do you know whether you're an aptitude person? The first is you're curious. You must have quality of patience. Thirdly, you must have an open mind, you know. You don't have fixed ideas. Then you have, must have a keen power of observation. This, you know, uh, uh, the famous story goes, Newton was sitting there and an apple fell. That apple must have fallen in the presence of so many. You, you understand? Whatever you see, uh, you observe and say, wow. And then you ask why. So you must have that uh, sort of ability uh, you know, to, to, to observe. So observation, analysis, synthesis, uh, curiosity, uh, patience are some of the attributes you must have uh, before you get into science. This is Scienteens, where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right career and academic decisions in the sciences. I do this as a fellow student, and your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone contributing to this channel a lot of encouragement.